In introducing the elimination method, we said that we hope when we add together the left-hand sides and add together the right-hand sides, that we will end up with one of the variables canceling out. What if that doesn't happen? For example, in this equation, if we add together the left-hand sides, add together the right-hand sides, we get 15x. Uh, 3y plus negative 6y is negative 3y equals 33. Now, we did that correctly in the sense that if these two equations are true, this one must be true. So in that sense, there's nothing wrong with this equation. It just doesn't do us any good. Why doesn't it help us? Because it doesn't have one of the variables in it. Why doesn't it help us? Because it still has two variables in it. Our goal was to get rid of one of the variables. When this happens, when neither one of the variables will cancel out, we need to do something to the equations first. In order for one of the variables to cancel out, it must have opposite coefficients in the two equations. In the last video, for instance, y had coefficients 7 and negative 7. Here, the coefficients of x are 4 and 11. Those are definitely not opposites. The coefficients of y are 3 and negative 6, also not opposites. What can we do that lets us change a coefficient? Well, the only thing that we can really do to change coefficients is to multiply both sides of the equation by some number. What number should we multiply by? Well, we should choose a number to multiply by so that one pair of coefficients are opposite. In this system, I see that 3 times 2 is 6, so that means that if I multiply the first equation on both sides by 2, my coefficients of y will be opposite. So I start with this system. I'm going to manipulate this equation. I multiply both sides by 2. When I distribute, I'll get 8x plus 6y is 2 times 24 is 48. And so now instead of my original system, I have, I've manipulated the first equation. So the first equation is now 8x plus 6y is 48. And the second equation I'm leaving alone. So I have 11x minus 6y is 9. Remember, minus 6y means plus negative 6y. Now if I add these together, 8x plus 11x is 19x. 6y plus negative 6y is 0y. 48 plus 9 is 57 we see that y has been eliminated. So 19x is 57. Divide both sides by 19. We get x equals 3. To find the value of the second variable, we should use one of the original equations, not one of the equations that we've manipulated. Why? Because if we made a mistake somewhere in the manipulations, Using the manipulated equations to find the second variable will make that harder to catch. So I'm just going to use the first equation. So I'll have 4 times 3 plus 3y is 24. So 12 plus 3y is 24. Subtract 12 on both sides, and we get 3y is 12. 
divide by 3, and we get y is 4. If we want to check then, we only need to check in the other original equation. Is it true that 11 times 3 minus 6 times 4 is 9? Well, 11 times 3 is 33. 6 times 4 is 24. That subtraction does, in fact, give us 9. So how do we decide what to multiply by? The short answer is, remember what we're trying to accomplish. So whichever variable we're trying to eliminate, we need a common multiple of the coefficients, and we need opposite signs, one positive, one negative. So let me show you an example that's really awkward as far as making this happen. And I'll show you a technique that always works. Say we have this system. 5x plus 7y is 11. 2x plus 11y is negative 12. There's nothing obvious to multiply by. In the last example, we had to multiply by 2 because 2 times 3 was 6. Here, we can't take 2 times anything to get 5. We can't take 5 times anything to get 2. 7, 11, nothing in common. In a system that looks like this, we just pick. For the sake of this example, I'm going to pick x to eliminate. Notice that you could also choose y and get the same correct answer at the end. Your steps in the middle will just look different. Now, I don't know what to multiply by, but this will always work. We'll multiply the first equation by the coefficient in the second, the second equation by the coefficient in the first, and make one negative. All right, we want to end up with one of our equations having a negative coefficient of x and the other one having a positive. So the first equation, I want to multiply both sides by 2. The second equation, I want to multiply both sides by 5. And when I do that, if I do it just like this, I'll end up with positive 10x and positive 10x. So I want to make one of those multipliers negative. Um, I'm just going to pick the first one kind of arbitrarily. Again, you would get the same answer if you picked the second one. Your steps in the middle would just look different. First equation, when we distribute, we get negative 10x minus 14y equals negative 22. Second equation, when we distribute, we get positive 10x plus 55y equals negative 60. Notice the numbers are pretty big here. That's to be expected. Our transformed system is now negative 10x plus negative 14y equals negative 22 and positive 10x plus 55y equals negative 60. When we add them together, negative 10x plus positive 10x is 0 negative 14y plus 55y, let's use the calculator. Negative 14 plus 55 is 41y, equals negative 22 plus negative 60 is negative 82. Okay, so 41y equals negative 82, dividing both sides by 41 we get y is negative 2. Now we go back again to one of our original equations to find out x. I'm going to pick the first equation. 5x plus 7 times we've discovered that y is negative 2 is 11. 5x 
plus negative 14 is 11. Add 14 on both sides. We get 5x is 25, and therefore x is 5. Checking, we have 2 times we discovered that x is 5, plus 11 times we discovered that y is negative 2. Well, that's 10 minus 22, which is indeed negative 12. So, if we can't see what to multiply by, we can always pick something to multiply by by swapping the coefficients. How will we know that we've done it wrong? How do we know that we picked the wrong thing to multiply by? Simply put, if no variable cancels out when you add, try again. If no variable cancels out, the number you chose to multiply by didn't work, so you should try a different number.